Welcome to another video, I'm Base Pelagio. Today we are going to discuss the lore of animal people in Dwarf Fortress. Animal people are half man, half beast creatures with various animal-like traits and abilities. And the list is quite extensive. Any animal you can think of mixed with a man, a humanoid, is practically in the game and sprited. Everything from Aardvark Man to Adder Men to Albatross People, Wombat People, Rat People, Monarch Butterfly People. The list is on and on and on, and every animal has with it traits that that animal would have, or even some that you couldn't even imagine. Let me give you an example of one of these species that plagued one of my very first fortresses ever in the new Steam release. Kia Men, a Kia woman to be exact, who kept robbing my fortress blind because I was so new my stockpile was outdoors. Now, these Kia people are like half birds, half humanoid, that love the tropics. They spawn in groups between 5 and 10, and if you mess with one of them, they all usually will gang up on you. They are eager to steal any type of food or item, and this is their trait. They are a little over half the weight of an average dwarf. It makes them fairly weak, but when they're in their little flock, they can be a problem, especially to a new player. Most of these animal-human hybrids all have legendary climbing skill, except a handful. For example, this parrot-like humanoid, the Kia woman that was bothering my fort, she could fly, so it was extremely hard to conquer. And dwarves like Kia people for their curiosity and intelligence. Now, a stark difference would be a deer man. And deer people here are animal people that are like the common deer. But these guys keep to themselves, and they're twice the size and weight of a dwarf, and they have huge horns that could gore you, their males do. And the females are very skittish, and deer people tend to join other civilizations more commonly than Kia people, and like most animal people are playable in adventure mode. Surface animal people are different than subterranean animal people. The surface animal people are usually more civilized and a little bit more friendly. Not all of them are violent towards you. Some of them will actually come to your civilization and not rob you. But the subterranean animal people are actually a whole entire civilization in themselves. They're rarely encountered and they live in small tribes underground. They are always violent upon contact and they have primitive weapons like wooden spears and blowguns. They are the only source of blow darts in the game. And they're also found in sewers, formed from collections of outcasts in societies. So you go to a big human city, their sewers might have subterranean animal people. Some of them include Batman, funny enough, Cave Fishman, Cave Swallow Man, and Ulm Man, all with their own unique traits and abilities. If I were to go over every specific species in the game, this would be a one hour video. Some of you might like that. I have only experienced a literal one handful of these beings. And if you look on the wiki, the list is huge. Some of them seem interesting to me, and others seem like a real pain in the butt. Like the King Snake people. They are basically a half man, half king snake. They are very powerful, but luckily their bites are not poisonous, like their cousin, the Cobra Man, who can literally spit venom at your dwarves. You have ostrich people that are so fast that you have to pause your game to click on them. And dwarves like ostrich people for their long necks and their giant eggs. Literally. Your dwarf might look upon an ostrich person 
and have a happy, pleasant thought off of their long neck. Grizzly bear people are ferocious. And just like other animal people in the surface world, they can join civilizations, become historical figures, appear as visitors in your fortress, and even playable in adventure mode. And if you play a grizzly bear man in adventure mode, let's just say that dwarves like them for their enormous strength. And also, bear people have been seen wearing backpacks containing large birds, quote unquote. I thought that was a funny little addition to the Wikipedia if you get the joke. A little Banjo-Kazooie reference. So I don't actually think you'll see them in game with a bird. Maybe. It might be like a Easter egg. Who knows? I have not encountered one yet. And then you have the Echidna men. These are like half man, half Echidnas, like Knuckles. And the funny thing is, these creatures used to have a bug. I think it's been fixed, maybe not. But if a curled up or retracted creature dies and, and is then reanimated by a necromancer, it retains its effects of being curled up, but can move and attack as normal. The result, for example, an undead Echidna is invulnerable to destruction. It becomes an unkillable entity in the world possibly only to be destroyed by a dwarven atom smasher, but I'm not sure. And guys, that is it. I would love to hear your comments down below on what animal people you have encountered, what they have done to your civilizations, if they were friends or foes. I personally have not met any of the subterranean animal folk yet, and very few of the surface ones. Mostly, they have been a trouble and pain in my side because I was going in savage biomes. It was like King Snake people, the Kia people. We had, I think, a tiger man who visited my place. I mean, I was so new at the game, it gave me a warning that someone showed up. But they were just walking around, not doing anything. And then they became a werewolf or were something. A tiger man became a, like a were tapir. Something wild. I was like, this game is awesome. But that's just a little side extra. Thank you all for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. And I'll see you on the next one. <laughs>